An Australian graphene manufacturer by the name of the Graphene Manufacturing Group is partnering with the University of Queensland to develop and commercialize a new graphene aluminum ion battery that according to early tests may be able to fully charge in five minutes or less. Let's talk about this new battery tech and see if it's all hype or if it's a real deal. I'm Jonathan and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Let's start off by talking a little bit about the Graphene Manufacturing Group itself. On their website, the Graphene Manufacturing Group described themselves as a clean technology focused company, which aims to offer energy saving products and solutions and energy storage products enabled by graphene manufactured in-house via a proprietary production process. We'll talk more about their graphene manufacturing process in just a little bit, but they do currently sell a number of different graphene based products, including graphene enhanced heating, ventilating and air conditioning coatings, lubricants and fluids. According to an April 2021 article from the University of Queensland quote, Brisbane based graphene manufacturing group will manufacture battery prototypes for watches, phones, laptops, electric vehicles and grid storage under a research agreement with the scientist of the University of Queensland's Australian Institute for Bioengineering and Nanotechnology. Now let's transition over to the battery tech itself and answer the question, what is graphene and how is it related to batteries? According to a 2019 article from the University of Waterloo, graphene is an allotrope of carbon which comprises a one atom thick layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal honeycomb-like structure. Simply put, graphene is a single layer of graphite, the same material we use in pencils to write with. They also mentioned that graphene has an extremely high electrical conductivity and also its high electrical current density, the rate at which current travels through a cross-sectional area is a million times that of copper. Also according to graphene-info, graphene is considered an excellent heat conductor and several studies have found it to have unlimited potential for heat conduction. Theoretically, graphene could absorb an unlimited amount of heat. When you combine these two attributes, high electrical conductivity and also high thermal conductivity, this potentially allows for extremely fast charging and discharging as well, all while maintaining safety. These graphene aluminum ion batteries are made up of the following materials. The cathode is made up of graphene, the anode is made up of aluminum in a foil form, and the electrolyte is made up of aluminum chloride. It's important to point out that aluminum ion batteries are not new. When it comes to charging speeds, these graphene aluminum ion batteries can charge fully in around five minutes or less, obviously much faster than lithium ion batteries. According to Craig Nickel, the director and CEO of the Graphene Manufacturing Group, the aluminum ion battery is a well-known laboratory product that has proven to be a hybrid supercapacitor battery. Now, what is a hybrid supercapacitor? Well, a regular supercapacitor can be charged and discharged very quickly without damage. However, it has very little energy density and it has a low operating voltage lower than that of a traditional lithium ion battery. On the other hand, a lithium ion battery has a much greater energy density, but does not have the ability to charge and discharge as quickly without damaging the cells. A hybrid supercapacitor is a mix of these two technologies. And according to Eaton's website, quote, hybrid supercapacitors have a higher operating voltage and much higher capacitance and energy density than symmetric supercapacitors. However, while these hybrid supercapacitors do have a much higher energy density compared to standard capacitors, they still fall short of current lithium ion battery tech. Other lab tested graphite aluminum ion batteries have energy densities well below 100 watt hours per kilogram. However, the University of Queensland has developed a process that the CEO of the graphene manufacturing group, Craig Nichols, describes as drilling holes in the graphene platelets to allow the aluminum atoms to sit tighter, which reduces the amount of weight you need to store a charge. This results in a graphene aluminum ion battery with an energy density in the 150 to 160 watt hours per kilogram range. Here is a chart illustrating the approximate energy density of the Tesla 18650 cells and the 2170 cells in 2019 as well as my essence for Tesla's new 4680 batteries. As you can see, these aluminum ion batteries definitely fall short when it comes to cell level energy density. However, that is not all that matters. As this Clean Technica article points out, 
Aluminum ion batteries do not overheat nearly as much as lithium ion batteries do. Almost 20% of the weight and cost associated with a lithium ion battery pack is attributable to high performance cooling systems, which can be eliminated in most aluminum ion battery use cases. This reduction in cooling systems could make this technology make sense for a lower cost, lower range electric vehicle. Also with the ability to rapidly charge these batteries in one to five minutes, the shorter range becomes much less of an issue. Here's a chart that I've used in a past video showing the pack level energy density numbers for Tesla's and Neo's battery tech for a comparison. As you can see, there is quite a reduction from cell level to pack level energy density due to packing and cooling materials needed for these packs. Without the liquid cooling systems, this would allow for the aluminum ion batteries to be a lot closer to the pack level energy density of lithium ion batteries. When it comes to the cycle life of this new technology from the graphene manufacturing group, according to this Clean Technica article, these graphene aluminum ion batteries are able to last over 2000 charge and discharge cycles without any major performance loss. This battery tech also has the added benefit of a more simple supply chain. The main materials needed to manufacture graphene aluminum ion batteries is aluminum, natural gas, and electricity. These are all of course readily available in most countries and relatively inexpensive. This allows for a truly local supply chain and cost competitive batteries. In addition to easily obtainable materials, aluminum is the most commonly recycled metal and is easily recycled from these batteries at the end of its life. Now I'd like to address the issue of the high cost of graphene. Most commercially available graphene is very expensive and thus would make these batteries cost prohibitive. However, the graphene manufacturing group is a graphene manufacturer and the proprietary process appears to be much more cost effective than other graphene production processes. Here's a chart illustrating how the graphene manufacturing group turns natural gas into hydrogen and graphene in a very low cost effective way and showing the difference between the more complicated and expensive process that starts with mining carbon and ore and turning that into graphene. Now you might be saying this all sounds great, but when will we actually see these batteries in electric vehicles and other products? Well, in a recent interview, the CEO Craig Nichols mentioned, we are using existing tech to make the batteries. We are just changing the chemistry and changing the materials that go into the cells. Because of this, in my opinion, this should definitely make the transition from prototype to commercial product a whole lot easier and quicker. Also, according to a recent company presentation, they hope to have coin cell commercial prototypes ready by the end of this year and pouch cell prototypes by the end of next year, 2022. They illustrate these pouch cells being used in cell phones, laptop computers, grid storage, and also electric vehicles once they have proven them out. So in summary, these graphene aluminum ion batteries have the potential to charge extremely quickly. They decrease the risk of fire and also lower the cost of these batteries while simplifying the supply chain for the battery materials needed to manufacture them. Also, despite their lower energy densities, they still appear viable for lower cost, shorter range electric vehicles. So while this technology is not hype and does offer a lot of promise, unfortunately, it will still be quite a while before we see this technology in electric vehicles. I would love to see a larger company like Tesla coming along and purchase this company and speed up the development of this technology. I hope the graphene manufacturing group has great success and I hope to see these batteries and EVs someday in the not too distant future. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I also like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.